Hiya! So this is just another one of these videos because someone told me to make some videos. Um, this one's about the pancake timeline or a way of using pancake timelines in vidding, which is what I do. Pancake timeline is just a word for when you have a timeline here at the bottom. Let me just close that one. Which is where you're actually vidding. And then you have another one up top with all your other select reels in. Now you select, you can organize those however you like. This is the vid that I'm making at the moment. This is my selects reel. I've color coded it by season so I can see, and it's actually organized by season at the moment. It doesn't have to be. But the point is, so I can see in other selects organized in different ways, what season things are at just really simply. The way to do that is I've posted about this on my Tumblr, but if you just go into project settings, general, there's actually a little checkbox here, which is just display the project item name and label color for all instances. Now, if you check that and then you go into your project, go into my source list here, which is just got everything in there. You can label, just label by season like this. Control click, label, and then just choose a color. If I choose, say, it doesn't matter what color, right? If I choose yellow, all these are going to turn yellow. And also, if I go back into that select timeline, it'll be easier to see. All of these are going to go yellow because it's going to update. That's the point of checking that box. Change this to another color. Right. So season two is cerulean. Now, from your selects reel, which is just basically a load of clips, as you're going in, you can organize into anything. So at the moment, I'm really into Brienne's fight scenes, especially a fight scene with the Hound. So I've got a load of her fight scenes, and I've sliced them up. So here you can see me slicing up the Hound fight. Right? I've sliced them up, and as I I'll bring this down here. As I go forward through this fight, I'm looking at these directions. Such a nice shot of Arya. She's so into this fight. Arya is all of us. Right, this is going... I'm pointing at the screen really helpfully. It's going that way. Luckily, I've, I've made little arrows. Right, it's following that direction. So it's going right. So I'm just going to drag that, I'm going to go, the thing about pancake timelines or stack timelines of any sort is you can just drag from one to the other, you don't have to copy and paste, Nothing. It's totally, there's nothing destructive about it so you can just endlessly drag stuff around and reorganize things as much as you like and nothing actually gets moved, it just gets copied. So now I've got so here, right, I've got a load of things moving in this direction, which can be useful, right, sometimes, um, especially if you're linking things, if you're doing like chaos cutting or anything like that, and you just need to have sequential motion to carry through a movement, that's it, that's one way to do it. I mean, this one is going up, down, left, right, turn, clash hit, clash hit like with noise or swords, so either actually literally crossed swords like that or some other kind of clashing like here we go we've got some noise, we've got some snow, we've got some water right so in terms of sound you could use those on similar sounds a thud hit is just bang like a really heavy impact so, you know, here's some actual drums and banging and stuff like that. Some rhythmic stuff. Oh, some bells. The bells, the bells. Bang, bang. Oh, yeah, thud hits hurt. Clash hits, maybe not so much. And um, what else have I got here? I've just got some kills just because that's part of the narrative of my story. But it could be anything. I'm, uh, one of the things about this is you can just add stuff as you go along thinking forward to other vids so elements are used quite a lot so basically anytime I see some nice fire 
Um, I'm cutting for anything. I chuck it in my fire sequence. Yeah, I've got about you know, seven minutes of fire here. So it's dead, dead easy. You just zoom out, then you can scrub through super, super fast and find stuff. And you can see what season it's in just by looking at it. Um, so it's just a really fast way to navigate a path around like this is over 70 hours it's over 70 hours it's a complicated story there's like a million characters but it's hard you know it's hard to remember what goes where and if you don't want to end up just using money shots which i mean that's a kind of bidding fine but that's not what i'm interested in if you don't want to just end up using money shots and the same things over and over then you have to find a way to find that other stuff. And Pancake Timeline is, is a really good... It does mean that you can vid really quickly. So say if you've got this stuff set up and you've only got like a few hours and you want to just put something together, uh, like I heard a great... That's motion. I heard a great track. I was talking to my friend we were saying that this track was just exactly the dead, the whites, you know, the others. And I happen to have, you know, a massive sequence with the dead in, right? With loads and loads of... And again, you can see straight away from the seasons. So if I wanted to, I could just throw down that song, go straight to my sequence with all the dead in, and then I can go and get elements, I can get, I've got crowds here, I've got birds, you know, stuff that you use all the time, hands, eyes, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you can just go straight to it. And the great thing is, if, if you want a vid, I know like some vidders just want to make like one vid in a fandom, but if you're like in a, if you're the kind of vidder that vids in a fandom, like I'm, I'm a vidder that goes to a fandom and I'm in that fandom and I make vids in that fandom. I'm not going to, I really don't want to just make one vid. I want to really inhabit that source. Then doing it this way means, how to say this? Doing it this way is you get, you get faster. You can just get faster and faster and faster because you get to know the source better and better and you can find your way around it more, so much more easily. The other, the only problem is, um, I guess repetition, but um, I do think that this is a way to guard against repetition without massively, massively expanding, without clipping every time, because, you know, clipping's boring. It's rubbish. The other thing about this is if you do this and you keep all these sequences and stuff, then you can just replace, so long as your actual source length and frame rates and everything are the same, you get better source, you can just replace these and everything else will update. So say if you're doing proxy bidding because you're on a laptop and it's not got a big hard drive or something like that, you can just bid with little proxies like 420, 480, something like that. And then just replace it right in the right in the project. You don't have to do anything else. There's no such thing like you would never have to remaster anything. You know, it just does it. Except for I did update Premiere and it moved every single one of my files over by like three frames just while I was in the middle of finishing a vid, which was a bit maddening. But anyway, that's a pancake timeline. That's one of the things you can use it for. There are other applications, I'm sure, if you want to say in the comments or whatever. But this is a fast way. You're going to make a vid. You make your your main selects reel, which is just really rough stuff. As you go through this selects reel and slice up shorter edits, you throw those, poof, 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 like sorting letters, you throw those into your sequences that you make. You'll see, you'll make, as you see patterns emerge, you'll make a new sequence, you know, like these are Brienne's motions, up, down, right, left, right, but if she if she fought in a different way, you might what you say if you were if you were slicing if you're making an Arya vid, Arya has a lot of dodges and a lot of turns, way more than Brienne, who's very big, right? And she's she's well, you know, she's quite graceless. I mean, she really bashes into people. 
I was really dodgy, whippy, you know, all the water dancing stuff and a lot of turns. So you would probably not just have two sequences, one for one for turn round and one for dodge. You would probably have like whip pan in out different. You know, you would you would arrange that differently. Just, you know, as as you look at the motion and you look at how somebody moves. Um, that's that. Bye.